What is a complete human? Is it a cover model? Is it a science geek? Is it a fitness expert? Or all of the above and more? Jana and Evan are crusaders that walk the earth looking at today's issues that touch our hearts and minds. The honest and hopeful outlook on the advancement of today's society. The science behind the decay of human relationships. The necessary preparations for future generations. Join us as we look deep inside ourselves and embark on a journey into becoming a complete human. What is the worst invention of all time? Most would argue that it's either the atomic bomb or some might even say the mankini. But what if the most lethal weapon of mass destruction was actually the refrigerator? Yes. The Refrigerator. Fitness icons of old like Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Didn't run to the refrigerator when they needed sustenance. And when Leonidas said this. Bartons, ready your breakfast and eat hearty. He didn't mean the mighty 300 Spartans should go raid the refrigerator for a frozen waffle. If you try to think back to before the refrigerator was even invented, people would walk for miles for their daily ration. Food was much healthier and it did not go to waste. The refrigerator has changed our relationship with food and not for the better. Convenience has led to really bad eating habits. Now we hop in our gas guzzling SUVs, drive 30 minutes to Costco and buy 100 cans of tuna fish and a year's supply of corn dogs and toilet paper. Hercules would be a DISAPPOINTED! Bodies are made in the kitchen, not the gym. Refrigerators have all but destroyed a path towards better health, while adding massive amounts of plastics to the ocean and billions of tons of food waste to our landfills. Now what's the solution? Do we all return our refrigerators and revert back to a different way of life? Perhaps not. Like Elon Musk and the electric car, Greg Connolly, CEO and co-founder of Trifecta Nutrition, has invested millions into solving one of our biggest problems on our planet. Trifecta is a home-delivered food company whose packing is environmentally friendly, whose food is healthy and delicious, and whose mission is to remove the possibility of diet failure by delivering fresh, healthy meals directly to consumers. Beyond the business, there is a passion to fix the way we eat, the way we approach food and how our habits have caused major issues in the world. Join Jenna and Evan as we peel back the layers of business whose purpose has led to a health and environmental revolution. Three hours till dinner? Piece of cake. girls he's making me dinner tonight see you tomorrow well get it girl then Looks great. Come this way. Well, what about dinner? We'll get to that later. Hey, hey, everybody. Evan DeMarco here. 
Most of you have heard about CBD over the last couple of years, and as one of the most successful product formulators in the CBD marketplace, I am intimately familiar with what it can and cannot do. With everything from miracle cures for cancer, to regrowing hair, to improving sex, the claims around CBD have been fanciful, if not completely false. You see, CBD is a great product, but it does have a very indirect impact on our bodies. That is why I was excited to create a product that uses some of the novel phytocannabinoids directly from our USDA certified organic farms right here in the US. These novel cannabinoids like CBC and CBG have been proven to have a direct impact on our bodies, especially for things like stress, anxiety, and pain. But that wasn't enough. I wanted to make the very best product for our customers. So I created a unique lipid delivery system to rapidly increase bioavailability. I also added a few extra goodies like beta caryophylline to really help with pain and recovery. CBC Plus is the next generation of phytocannabinoid products for the complete human. So head over to completehumancbc.com to get your bottle today. That's completehumancbc.com. Welcome back to another edition of the Complete Human Podcast with your hosts, Jana Breslin and Evan DeMarco. We are back for round three of the Complete Human Trifecta Podcast. Uh, technical difficulties. Like, do we have to say that? We do, because what we want to preface this with is, is that we're either getting really good at this or we're getting really bad at it. <laughs> and the jokes are going to be significantly more of this time around. <laughs> yeah, we're... I literally said that on the way over here. I was like, I'm running out of jokes. <laughs> I need to like... It's going to get bigger. It's going to get badder. It's going to probably get a little bit more bidet-ish. Oh, man. <laughs> So uh, we are here at Trifecta's headquarters with CEO Greg Conley. Thank you so much again for having us. Absolutely. Thank you guys for coming yeah. again. Greg, it's nice to see you. I know. <laughs> so one of the things I was thinking about, um, I was reading Principles by, by uh, Ray Dahlia um, mm -hmm. this morning. And, and one of the things that he keeps talking about are these, uh, basically these shapers. You know, and he, he brings Elon Musk up a lot. He brings Bill Gates up a lot. But, you know, these CEOs. I like where these, you're going with this. Yeah. <laughs> these visionaries who wanted to solve big, wow, holy shit problems. But they not only solved the problems, they were good leaders. And as I was reading this this morning, I kind of kept thinking of you. As, as, and so I'd love for you to give our audience a little bit of background on you and what brought you to dropping meals off on people's front door. Absolutely. Um, you, you know, the quick background is, you know, multi-time entrepreneur, uh, was doing the software thing for quite a while and really got to a point in my life where uh, I felt like I wasn't actually doing something that was making a contribution to humanity. I looked at people like Elon Musk and aspired to be like those type of entrepreneurs. And Bill Gates is largely, I know everybody thinks Bill Gates is like the secret take over the world plan. Uh, if you actually listen to the man, he's like the nicest, you know, most normal, gentle dude ever. Uh, he just happens to be super, super rich. Uh, but he gives away billions and billions of his dollars to try and solve, you know, major problems worldwide. And, and that, I want to get into that because why are people so alarmed by that? One of the most successful men in all of history, and he decides he's going to give back. And now all of a sudden he's the Antichrist and he's trying to sterilize our children or something like that. I, I really don't know. I, I, I think with every topic, there's um, always some controversy with it. Like if you if you look at like a lot, of, and this is a Bill Gates theory, if you look at a lot of the world problems, uh, a lot of them can be solved by, you know, what's at a macro level population control. But if you try and introduce to a whole bunch of different, you know, religions or groups or whatever, birth control and population control, they're like, okay, that's, that's bad. That's evil. Bill Gates is trying to, you know, sterilize, sterilize everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's, that's how you get to those like crossroads is Bill Gates is like, well, it turns out you can have a smaller carbon footprint if you have two kids instead of seven. Yeah. And what do you know? That seems like a totally logical thing. But, you know, when he says that to people, people are like, Bill Gates is trying to take over the world. Yeah. So that, I think, is the problem for a lot of people. I mean, even Elon Musk, I was just randomly watching a, a Joe Rogan, Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, a skit where they were, or a podcast where they were talking through Elon Musk trying to nuke the, the poles on Mars. And... He throws that out there to like get people to think about terraforming Mars, that it's like possible. He doesn't actually want to nuke the fucking poles <laughs> on Mars. You know, that's like a huge, crazy thing to do. Um, so I, I think that's the problem is people tend to get like caught up in in uh, 
those type of storylines on the internet and it's easy to pick and choose specific sentences and you know make it sound like bill gates is trying to sterilize our children so so yeah those type of entrepreneurs really inspire me um you know i was very fortunate to uh to have some success at a you know younger age you know jason and i literally were living together at the time in the oakland hills um had excess money and i was like okay I'd, I'd really love to launch a business that that has a you know a macro level impact on humankind like that's something that really motivates me because i mean you guys know life happens fast i've been talking to people about this all week like i felt like i was in college last week and <laughs> you, you know, look like you were in college last week well i appreciate that <laughs> but uh it, it's it's really something that uh you start thinking about as you get older and older when you're in your 20s you're like oh fuck it i'm gonna do whatever i want uh and then you get into your 30s and you're like oh well after this is the 40s <laughs> and then you, you know obviously so 40s true. you're like you're like oh yeah i still feel and look great in your 40s and then you're like oh 50s that's you're a full-blown fucking adult at that point yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like you're you're the you're the the person you know running things so so yeah it, it happens you know life happens really fast and i know to build a huge organization it, it takes time so i wanted to start young with entrepreneurship and i wanted to you know focus my effort on something that i i think could have a huge impact and for me that happened to be the chronic disease crisis. You know, all these articles now that COVID has been around for a while are coming out like CNN, Fox, you know, uh, PBS, NBC, et cetera. Uh, you're 10 times more likely to end up in the hospital if you have type 2 diabetes. And one in 10 people that go into the hospital with type 2 diabetes that have COVID will be dead in 28 days. So your, your odds of dying go like off the charts if you have any of the, you know, we call them comorbidities mm -hmm. in the press right now. The reality is we're overweight as a country and it's something that I personally, all of us can empathize with. We all have like a weird relationship with food, whether we're in great shape or terrible shape, you know, it's, it's just something that everybody thinks about multiple times a day. And we wanted to give people the most convenient option conceivably possible uh, to eat healthy, you know, because right now the really convenient options that are available in the market are to eat like shit. You know, it's drive throughs it's door dashing burritos and, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, we we thought there was a market solution for that. So that was like the thesis behind, you know, Trifecta and why we launched the brand. And and yeah, it's exciting. I mean, I get to talk to. Awesome people like you guys. We, we're gonna have. Pointed to her. <laughs> I know. And I got. I got Loop Janet. You know. um, we've got. Uh, uh, you know, Tyson Beckford's gonna be in the office next week. Like really? it's it's like super fun stuff like that where we're dealing with you know celebrities and celebrity athletes because they care about the problem. You know, yeah. a lot of them. You know, I was. I tell people I was partying with Arnold at his house. You know, right before the pandemic, which is the most ridiculous house you've ever seen. By the way, I can um, imagine. He's got like 40 million sculptures. He has the actual thinker, like the the thinker sculpture. <laughs> he has like the real one. It's like really? a hundred, it's like a hundred million dollar sculpture. Yeah. Wow. Um, but, uh, you know, he already is super rich and famous, but this is something he personally individually cares about. You know, he started, I think it was under George Bush senior. He started like the kids fitness program that, you know, has now spread to schools in 32 States. And that's, you know, that's one of his, like legacy projects because Arnold, he had huge success. And at a young age, he started thinking about, Hey, I'm not so fucking young anymore. Maybe I should do something that's going to have a major impact, yeah. and, you know, until the end of time. So, so yeah, that's the driver for me. It's really fun. I get to do podcast three times in a row. <laughs> sometimes this is definitely a new record Maybe for me. Four. We'll see. I know. We'll see how this one goes. We're watching you, Jason, on the technical difficulties, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun job and, you know, it's uh, it's something that, that keeps me going and, and highly motivated. Yeah. yeah. So good. Love it. That's it. Love it. Yeah. Love yeah. It. All right. We're wrapping it <laughs> yeah. up. It. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, no. So uh, I think Trifecta was an amazing concept before COVID. And now there's mm -hmm. there's. There's a real, there's a reality of life that has kind of hit us over the head, and and that's not only the health crisis, but that's, you know, things like going to the grocery store, where now people are so afraid to walk out their front door, go to the grocery store, you know, be around people, and so trifecta really solves a lot of problems. It checks a lot of boxes, 
But I'd like to kind of take a step back and look at the origins of this. And, you know, how do you as a company saying that I want to make people healthier, how do you go about the science of that? Um, it's, it's a great question. I mean, the, the difficulty is, uh, a lot of people like a lot of different diet types, which there's no easy one size fits all. Like even you two, you know, you're both in great shape, but realistically you probably weigh 60, maybe as much as 70 pounds different from each other. Are you and, that much heavier than me? And, <laughs> and, uh, as it, long you, as it's all muscle, then that's all I care about. You know, with that, you have to, you know, ultimately be able to fluctuate macros up and down. You know, maybe one of you eats vegan and one of you eats keto. Like, uh, there, there's a lot of different, uh, diet types that people choose as well as macro levels, depending on what size human they are. So we really had to think through like, how can we mass produce? Uh, food in that way, but at the same time, mass produce it from scratch. So even though we'll ship, you know, probably around 18 million meals this year, uh, we're still like hand chopping the onions and tomatoes and, you know, all of that type of stuff, which is, is, which is incredibly laborious, you know, laborious. Uh, But the, you know, the problem is if you use like automated choppers and stuff like that suddenly the onions and like the curry look the same as the onions in the burrito bowl and people mm-hmm. start to notice that shit and they it, don't feel the love well well the, <laughs> the hand chopped yes, love they don't that, have, you know they don't, takes they don't 600 taste the employees love. Exactly. um but uh yeah i mean yes it's it's really making that investment into having like incredibly high quality food that feels like food you cooked yourself you know, that's ultimately the experience we're trying to give people because it's really difficult to um, get people to adopt something that feels like it was mass produced. You know, we we want it to feel like, <laughs> hey, this is food you home cooked, fits your diet, fits your, you know, body size, depending on how you know big you are. And, you know, that's you, know, you got to stop talking about her weight like that. She's sitting right here. <laughs> I'm sure she's very self-confident <laughs> when it comes to her weight. Uh, but, you know, ultimately that's that, you know, that was the impetus behind it. And, and yeah, I mean, we think of like COVID and pandemic and leaving our home, like we're starting to like bid on like Medicare bids and stuff like that, where, you know, there's a huge elderly population that is not mobile anymore or people with disabilities or, you know, there's a lot of like, we're all three, you know, very healthy in the prime of our lives, but, you know, there's a huge population of people that, that aren't, and they're not able to, you know, go grocery shopping in the first place, let alone when they're at even higher risk with something like a pandemic. So, so yeah, a lot of elements that go into it. And one of the things that fascinates me about your company is building a supply chain like this. You know, how do you go about in a healthy, organic way, building a supply chain as massive as yours? It's got to be you have a lot more hair than someone who's, who's going through these. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm hanging on by the, the skin of my teeth. That's the one thing I can lord over Jason. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot. You know, we've got obviously commodities. They call it commodity sourcing is like the industry term for it. But that's like sourcing broccoli and salmon and rice and all of this type of stuff at I pray to God we still have power. He's like climbing, climbing under the desk, desk right now. I'm having trouble holding it in over here. <laughs> um, but you know, doing the commodity sourcing is is a huge piece of it. We're we're actually hiring a, a new vice president of supply chain who's literally a subject matter expert in, you know, commodity sourcing. He did sourcing for like Cigna, which is, you know, part of the Cisco network, mm-hmm. you know, that's a seven billion dollar PL. Uh, PF Chang's, they had 440 restaurants and, and 23 distribution centers, you know, all these massive, massive organizations so that we can really, you know, source the highest quality food from wherever we're getting it. Because that, I mean, that's the other problem is the volume. We buy like millions of pounds of chicken. So you'd love to like buy from, you know, a local farmer that has like 300 chickens, but Three you know, chickens. <laughs> yeah. we're going to go through that in like 47 seconds. So it's, got, you know, it's got to be, uh, you know, the, the right type of farming, but done, you know, properly at scale. And we, we use our buy power to, to be able to support those farmers because they're able to sell us food at a, you know, more premium price. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's the only way, I mean, you know, considering the logistics of getting all of those raw materials to like a, you know, to a cooking center, preparing it all, and then getting a heavy box to someone like it's a 
you have, I would imagine when you sat down and looked at this business, there, there must have been roadblock after roadblock, you know, thinking like, how do you actually make this kind of model work? There are, but it's still so much simpler than a grocery store. You've got to think we've got 185 SKUs, a grocery store, like your average Safeway has 110,000. So it's just a massive reduction in overall SKUs because we're combining the food already. So we may source, you know, several thousand commodities that we use to like cook into the meals, but you could have a chicken curry and you could also have a chicken burrito bowl. You know, there's going to be some ingredients that like carry over to other stuff. So, you know, to your previous question, we use RDs and culinary nutrition chefs to make sure we've got the macros and everything balanced. And then on the sourcing side, we're trying to find, you know, wild caught wherever we can, uh, you know, grass fed animal welfare level five, really the, you know, the most premium ingredients we can find in the market because, you know, we feel like it's the right thing to do. And, you know, our customers reward us for it because they don't, they don't have to, you know, go into the grocery store and make all those decisions. I mean, it almost seems I've been doing this for long enough. It seems archaic to me to like go to a grocery store and be like, reading the labels on all these like different <laughs> things. It's like, just get the food delivered to you fully cooked. Like why try and do all the math of calculating, oh, yeah. if I make a meal that has these beans and this rice <clears throat> and these tortillas and this chicken, you know, that's going to give me this amount of cal. It's like hard, you know? It takes out the like, guesswork. Yeah. Like you guys are obviously in great shape. So you clearly figured it out at some point, but it was probably in a relatively simple way. Probably started. Yeah, we like, got a sure. trifecta box every other Friday showing up. Of course door. now. But like before that, you're probably doing like chicken and broccoli, you oh, know, sure. like, well, even you know, like competing in bikini competitions, you're like on top of your nutrition. And so going going from that, using trifecta did make it a lot easier. And then you know, transitioning into CrossFit style and kind of just changing my nutrition in general. It was so, so helpful. And it was just like the time savings is just insane. Did you ever go down to like pure protein? Some people have done that. I've done that. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't tried that yet. Mm -hmm. You always included like a vegetable or something. Yeah. 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 See, so yeah, it's, it's hard. To, it's hard to do on your own. You know, a lot of people will go down to like just chicken. I think <laughs> just because someone said it was a good idea. Like I had no, there was no value. It's not like I was competing <laughs> for anything. I'm like, like, oh, I'm going to do this in like about a week later when you can't take a shit because you have had <laughs> no dietary fiber. You're like, why am I doing this? Like, insert know. bidet. Yeah. <laughs> insert bidet. Insert brand muffin. <laughs> yes and yes. You probably need both of those to make this a win at the end. Yeah. But um, and, a, and a, you know, and a tissue to, to wipe away the tears. <laughs> Oh, this is definitely a Friday podcast, yeah. but, uh, but yes, no, it's, uh, you want to give people a balanced diet and most people don't think about eating for volume, but that's like another, you know, big key to the puzzle is if you include vegetables and you cook them right, so they don't taste like shit, you end up being able to eat a huge amount of food. Yeah. And that's what most Americans want. Most Americans want to eat a lot of food feel full and then you know from there they're able to stick to their diet more effectively what people hate is being hungry you know which especially if you're competing you know obviously oh. there's going to be <laughs> you know like a 12-week block where real. you're just like yeah. you know slapping evan around it's it's uh you know it's it's difficult you started competing again <laughs> <laughs> well I mean, you know what i mean you get the idea oh man he's in for one later <laughs> but, Jack, please awesome. Um, let's talk a little bit about the environmental component, because I think when, you know, I was introduced to Trifecta from Jana and when she moved up to Sacramento, she's like, oh, I'll just have Trifecta shipped here. Like, and I had tried prepackaged meals before and I, I largely felt that they tasted like canned dog food. Mm -hmm. So I, I was a pleasantly surprised and that's not a, a commercial for you guys that I think that's just the reality. Um, but I was also kind of pleasantly surprised about the packaging side of things. You know, you guys have really taken a, a stand on the environmental component of what it takes to deliver food to someone's home. Yeah, absolutely. And that's and it's another option for or opportunity for us to like short circuit the supply chain is if you go to a grocery store, you don't realize that like those perfect apples you see all those you know, bags of tortillas or whatever it is that are on the shelves. At one point, those were in what they call cases, you know, or case packs. I'm sure you guys see it on the complete human side of the fence. Oh, yeah. um, 
with the cases you want to be uh you know obviously there's packaging right there and then the cases are usually palletized which is additional packaging the end consumer that buys an apple in the grocery store doesn't see any of that shit. all they see is like the the end yeah, packaging but- yeah so we Eliminate all all of that kind of in transit packaging first off. So that's a huge reduction in both uh, carbon footprint and packaging. But then on top of that, we're, you know, going, like you said, going fully biodegradable with the packaging. So we replace the styrofoam with a uh, temper pack. They have this Climacell pro- product that we love that is, it's curbside recyclable. So if you don't want to try and compost it, you're going to throw it in with your cardboard. And then on the flip side, if it does end up in the ocean, which a ton of packaging does, about yeah. 91% of plastic packaging ends up in the ocean, uh, it biodegrades in like six months. So, you know, that's ultimately where we want to be across the board. We're, we're deploying uh, ice packs that are, you know, plant food as well as uh, biodegradable cases around them that are made out of bonded fiber and then bonded fiber trays as well. So bonded fiber is like the new plastic it's a a slush that they make out of you know virgin newspaper or you know uh, recycled cardboard or whatever it is and then they you know put it under a ton of pressure to press it into everything from like six pack rings for the beer we're going to drink in 20 minutes or (laughs) you know uh or trays you know that you're you're putting food in whatever the situation is so it it um It's pretty amazing technology. And if I were the plastic industry, I would be scared shitless because everybody wants it. You know, it's like if you could get the same thing, we need to scare the plastic industry. Yeah. I was going to say it's inspiring because I do feel like there is like this movement where people want to do more for the planet. And it, and sure, I mean, if you're ordering food, if you're ordering, I even feel guilty with ordering so many things on Amazon, right? Like all this packaging that things come in. It's Mm -hmm. like, I do have a guilty thing. So if there's ways for me to, to help in any way, like I'm much more likely to support a company who has those initiatives. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything's plastic. This fucking plant right here is plastic. (laughs) It's, it's ridiculous at this point. And plastic and the oil industry are synonymous. You know, I'm over here like, shouting Elon Musk and, you know, driving a Tesla and having solar panels on my house. And then, you know, I I can't be doing that while I ship, you know, millions of tons of plastic because plastic is made out of fucking oil. You know, it's it's all tied together. So that's that's really the idea is to eliminate plastic completely from the supply chain and then reduce our carbon footprint by not having retail locations. There's no brick and mortar trifecta. I mean, you're in our headquarters, but this is all like people type it on laptops and podcast studios and stuff. Uh, And then there's no distribution center. It goes straight from the farmer, rancher, fisherman to our cooking facility in Los Angeles and then straight to consumers nationwide. There's no middle steps, distributors, retailers, et cetera. So So, it's, it's a better business model in general. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, when you, when you think about that, there's so many, when you think about the average supply chain for that tortilla that you buy at the grocery store, right? It's, you know, the corn gets, you know, picked and then goes to a mill, then, you know, goes to a factory, then goes to a distribution center, then goes to the grocery store, and then you bring it home. So the carbon footprint for that one tortilla is ridiculous. And, Mm -hmm. you know, optimizing supply chain like that is kind of brilliant. Yeah. And if you look at like, uh, you know, whether you believe in in climate change or not, if you look at the carbon emissions uh, across the different categories, cars are obviously a fair chunk. Buildings are a huge chunk. They're like 55 percent, you know, the power that we use to power all these high rises and everything in our houses. But uh, food is a huge percentage as well, whether it's you know cows and animals, whatever, whether it's the carbon footprint to grow the food, you know, you need tractors and fertilizer and all of that. So if we're able to minimize food food waste, eliminate packaging, and then reduce the transit because it's a, a shorter supply chain, it's it's win, win, win across the board. And that that's candidly, you know, why I think we've been so successful is because we are a substantive reduction in all of these areas. We're better in every way. And those are the businesses that, you know, ultimately end up winning in the long term right. because it's a, you know, it's a better business model. Yeah. Others have to level up to compete and it, it literally. forces, and, I, and that's why I think it's inspiring because it forces other companies to get to that level too. Yep. And so, which I guess is a good thing is then ultimately everything gets better, right? Yeah. I mean, going back to the Elon Musk example, his goal was not to like, every car in America is a Tesla. His goal was to force GM and Ford and Mercedes and Toyota and everything to go electric 
because he would start running away with the market and and he's ultimately succeeded you know they've had to make those changes because you know everybody tesla stock is like off the charts he's had like a rough last 30 days but yeah. you know he's still do you need a kleenex you know, Shut <laughs> he still was briefly you know the richest man on earth and yeah. he will be again like they're they're in the software game they're going to continue climbing once the new battery tech comes out they'll explode again the new texas china germany etc gigafactories are going to come online and you're going to see teslas everywhere yeah. I, I already see it today i pull up next to you know stoplights coming over here and there was three or four teslas at the stoplight with me mm -hmm. it's, well, as you said it's a software play too like when they get into the self-driving cars that's where oh yeah yeah you know. yeah if you guys really want to nerd out one of the great things about 5g other than allowing bill gates to control our brains uh <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke okay <laughs> joke for the listeners uh is it's it's almost no latency <clears throat> so you think like oh well like here in trifecta headquarters we have a uh, parallel two gigabit fiber optic which is like blazingly fast you can download a whole movie and a second, literally one second. It's no delay in porn watching at all. <laughs> I, <laughs> Evan's main concern. <laughs> I, I have an HR manager, so I'm not responding to that question. Uh, but you know, ultimately, it is uh, it's incredibly fast. But 5G is is like a significant reduction in the the length of the radio wave. It's almost to microwave level. Um, which a lot, which doesn't mean it's going to cook your brain people. That's <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> I'm like creating conspiracy <laughs> theories by the second people like he said, 5g is microwaves. Um, and it, it you put it, the shovel down, Greg, you know, stop digging the hole. It, exactly. It means because there's no latency that we will be able to do things like self-driving cars that need to immediately be able to, you know, change lanes, do whatever, uh, surgeries. So you've got to imagine there are like certain incredible brain surgeons or whatever it is that there's only a small amount amount of them, but there's lots of robots. So if they can control robots that are far away with no latency, I mean, you don't want like one second latency on some guy that's like cutting in your fucking head. <laughs> no. uh, you want like instant real time, yeah. no latency. So the amount like it, 5G is going to be transformative. And it's also able to connect to significantly more devices. So like we all talk about like the internet of things stuff, like that's going to go off the charts. There's going to be chips and cups and coffee mugs and masks and literally everything because you'll be able to find everything at all times like 4g in a park you can have like 10,000 connections to it 5g you can have a million connections in in like a standard city park it's like a quantum leap in terms of connectivity so i'm excited my tesla is going to be sick your tesla is going to be <laughs> sick i'm That's just right. going to be like laid back playing chess <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I it's, mean, look, let, let's be honest. When I, when I moved out to California <clears throat> uh, almost 10 years ago, I, having traveled the whole world over, I recognized that Northern California drivers might be some of the worst in the world. So I'm excited for self-driving cars just because it'll put some of these people like, you know, like do something else. Take over their driving. Yeah. I mean, I feel <laughs> I try to not text while I drive at all, but you know, I feel way less guilty about it if I'm in autopilot. I'm like, hey, the car is driving itself, and you look over and people are like knee driving, you know, at 75 while they're texting. It's just so ridiculous. I have to admit something. I've I've had my Tesla for four or five years, and I've never used the autopilot feature. Oh my! I know. God. I I have a weird control thing about it. I want well, two things. One, I love driving the car so much, mm -hmm. and I don't go I don't go like far distances. So there's that. But I also it's like a I just I don't have you know at least you like tried it? it, like clicked it into gear. Yeah, but I get afraid. I just I don't know. Oh, it's like the greatest. You yeah. trust ever. issues. It's well, the, that's... <laughs> <laughs> she's like episode 37. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the uh, it's easily the greatest feature, yeah. I think, because yeah. uh, it, it allows you to um, like, especially on long trips, you don't have to worry about like, oh, I'm sitting, making sure I'm staying in the lanes, et cetera, right. et cetera. It's it's amazing. It's yeah. you should try it. All right. Give it a whirl. I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> Even if you're just doing it on the freeway for like a few minutes yeah. to test it out. I think it's the greatest thing ever. The idea yep. is great. <laughs> so let, let, let's let's merge you and Elon, right? You know, you, you know, two people who obviously set out with a mission to change the world and change the world for the better. And, and right now, you know, he's kind of focused on the environmental side. And that is great because if we don't fix that, we're all fucked anyway. But if we don't fix the health problem, doesn't matter how good the environment is. We're yeah. we're fucked anyway. So. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's it's obviously a huge killer. I mean, you guys are in this space as well. Uh, you know, latest meta analysis, 
number one killer in 198 countries is what they call suboptimal diet, aka you're eating shit. Um, Can we call that, that the McDonald's diet? Yeah, I mean the McDonald's Coca Cola combo diet, but it's it leads to you know hypertension, heart disease, stroke, cancer, type two diabetes, you know all all the the major killers across the board. So the the other thing that I think people don't think about because most people aren't thinking like society level thinking is it costs our society hundreds of billions of dollars. So that's the unique thing that I think happens with entrepreneurs like Bill Gates and Elon Musk that I've like tried to start doing at a much smaller scale with trifecta is they're thinking like society level problems. You know, if there's malaria in Vietnam, Bill Gates is like, I'm going to spend 400 million sending in, you know, malaria nets for the entire country, you know, whatever, whatever particular problem is, he's trying to solve it as like at like a species level or a society level. And this is easily the biggest problem when it comes to like a society species level problem. It costs us over 500 billion a year in Medicare costs for type two diabetes alone. And if you look at like the overarching cost, a lot of the estimates are in the low, you know, trillions, like 1.74 trillion a year. So you think about Good God, the shit we could buy. I mean, we could instantly give everyone a Tesla in the United <laughs> States in one year. Yeah. One instantly. year. <clears throat> instantly. Like that's incredible just by f- getting people into great shape. So I looked at you that time. That's uh, <laughs> because you felt guilty. You felt I did. I, I did feel guilty. I was like getting you into great shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go do some push-ups. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's that part of it bothers me as well i feel like it's such a waste of money for a problem that's going to make people feel better about themselves every aspect of their life gets better uh you know their careers everything uh they live longer they live healthier like better lives as well and it saves us hundreds of billions of fucking dollars in healthcare costs it's like why are we not plowing more resources into this so a a few days ago i had a board meeting i'm on the board of the american heart association and and yeah i mean i i want to dive like face first into healthcare because imagine that opportunity if physicians are able to prescribe insulin for you and at the same time an outpatient meal delivery program like suddenly you can actually cure your type two diabetes and we we may have a chance of like changing the problem in the u.s i love problems that people think are like too big to be solved for some reason that like fires me up i have like a thing with like proving people wrong um but you know elon i think you know is a great example he had the same you know drive people are like you're not going to change the car industry and the oil industry two of the biggest industries in the world at the same time and he was like watch me bitch yeah, like, yeah. well and I, I think you know part of being a, a great entrepreneur too is recognizing trends right like you mm-hmm. know elon wasn't i'm not saying he's not innovative he was but he's like he also recognized like now's the time because mm-hmm. if it's not me it's going to be someone else he's like let's let's not put people in priuses and make them feel like you know san francisco urban you know douchebags sorry san francisco urban douchebags and prius but it's like he made he made <laughs> he's it like toyota s- please still sponsor us now. yeah <laughs> you want a prius no, no. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but it's like, you know, he made, he made the problem sexy. And I, mm. and I think that's the challenge, right? And and when we look at the healthcare industry, when I look at all the data on COVID right now and everything that you talked about, like the number of people that are getting sick because of obesity, like, why is the government not talking about that? Why mm. are we not shouting that from the rooftop saying, if you're overweight, like what if, you know, if the government came out and said, if you're overweight and you eat like shit, you're going to die from COVID. Like how many people would be outside immediately eating? Like, they have it's maddening. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's something that uh there's a lot of like the hardcore political pundits like Bill Maher or uh you know a bunch of them were like how is the CDC and Fauci and all these people how are they not shouting this from the rooftops? Because we used to do shit like that. Like I have a video that I play for people that that start at Trifecta. It's uh JFK did like a, he called it his great national effort, but it was to get everybody in America in the best shape of their lives. And his quote was, a country is only as strong as its citizens. 
And they did it in some schools. There's actually right here in Sacramento in Citrus Heights. They took a whole school, uh, and unfortunately it was all boys then. Sorry, Joanna. <laughs> uh, this was the 60s, uh, early 60s at that. And they took a whole school of, uh, you know, PE classes. And you look at these, you know, 16 to 18 year old boys and they all had six packs thousands of them they they were just in incredible shape in these videos and there's no kids that were like oh i'm big boned or you know blah 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 made up some fucking bullshit oh it's genetic you know da, 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 da. it was every single kid had a six pack and was in phenomenal shape and that type of like national thinking you like it's completely sucks that that jfk was assassinated because that that type of thinking i think was like amazing leadership if we had you know, president, I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat, if we had a president that was like, let's have a huge national effort to get America back into shape, it would pay dividends across the entire economy. It would be a huge, Yeah, the huge economic thing. boom would be instantaneous. It would be instantaneous and enormous and everybody would be higher energy. You know, they'd have better work-life balance, spending time with their, you know, family, the whole nine yards. You just feel better across the board when you're in great shape. Yeah, and, and if it puts Prozac out of fucking business, I'm all for it. Yeah, they'll come up with something else. Trust me, there's yeah. tons Restless of drugs leg that syndrome. we need. Yeah, <laughs> there's tons of drugs that we need. So, you know, ultimately, yeah, the... The drug makers are going to pivot to whatever the market needs. And right now it's stuff like insulin. So they're making, you know, insulin and Prozac because you feel terrible about yourself because you're. Because you just ate a obese. chocolate cake. Yeah. I mean, literally it's. She's uh, laughing because I did that before we got here. <laughs> you're like, and it was delicious, but I'll run later. <laughs> but I'll run later. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, we've moved in, in stage three of this podcast, we've moved on to some serious problem solving. Yeah, it's I mean, it is it really is at a macro level, something that's like maddeningly frustrating for me that we don't have leaders that are like talking about the core problem. They're talking about like the periphery yeah. stuff. That's like the band aid solution, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's like you're, you know, have a cut in your leg and it's gushing blood and you're like, oh, I'm not going to sew the artery. I'm just going to keep switching the, the, gauze. You know, the gauze on it. And you're <laughs> like, yeah, you should probably get surgery. Uh, and that's that's really how we approach healthcare. We're like, oh, it's a personal choice problem and therefore people will never make it. And that's why we want a market <clears throat> solution because if we can make the choice easier because it's you know cooler, sexier, uh, more green, more convenient, most importantly, then people ultimately will end up making that decision. And that's that's what we have to do. That's why we're so brand forward. That's why we partner with, you know, celebrities and celebrity athletes. It drives the the idea that being healthy is cool. And Instagram, candidly, was a huge win for us. Yeah. Instagram made looking at sexy people on the internet cool. Yeah. Like it's it's Before like it's it was pretty, just creepy. Before it was just <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know, you got into the porn world. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, and that was really all that was on the internet in the beginning. But you and know, I'm talking dial up porn too, which was bad because it was like, you know, the picture would like load, 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 and then all you'd think it was a hot girl, then it was like a penis. You're like, damn it. So, like, <laughs> that's way too much. He my, knows a lot about that. <laughs> that dial up. <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, long story short, though, Instagram did really introduce, um, you know, it, in, it, introduce kind of fitspo and that that whole thing where fitness suddenly was like the cool thing because it seems like ubiquitous now but in the past like jack lalane was people were like you're fucking crazy but you're gonna lift weights <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a fucking weirdo you know like that was they literally thought that doctors you know in the 40s would tell you that exercise was potentially bad for you like yeah they you just, know what they said if you wanted to lose weight start smoking yeah it well could have potentially worked, but that blows my mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's terrible. Obviously we have way better science, way better doctors, et cetera now, but, and exercise is, is very popular, but it's amazing to think that it's relatively new. I mean, we've had Mark Mastroff in here, the founder of 24 hour fitness, you know, multiple times. And it's crazy to think that what we think of as one of the biggest gym chains in the world, he was like, be great if there was a place for people to go and lift weights. <laughs> you know, like, that was like a thing someone was like oh shit we could start a gym that's a good idea and that's recent and you know put it all over the country like yep yeah i think with with social media it's allowed for a lot of information and a lot of just just different ideas to pop up there but i think it's also allowed for a lot of misinformation i know you talked about that oh, before yeah. 
you know, trifecta, you communicate a lot with your clients and your customers. And I mean, the amount of misinformation out there is insane. It's it's really painful. I mean, I know we joke about Bill Gates and putting chips in us and all of that type of stuff, but it is especially in the nutrition space. Yeah. It's it's very difficult because you'll see, you know, I'll see like covers of Us Weekly magazines and they're like, take this pill and lose 60 pounds in one week. And you're like, that's not reality unless you're getting liposuction. You know, nobody can lose weight that fast. It would be terrible for your body. And the amount of, we have to like really focus on evidence-based uh, nutrition, which is very difficult, especially in the current climate. There's so many conspiracy theories, so many, you know, crazy nutrition theories out there. I mean, we joke, there's like the snake diet where you literally eat nothing but meat. I mean, there's crazy diets out there where you're like, how did this actually happen? But, um, but yeah, we, we use MDs, RDs, PhDs to generate huge amounts of content that's on the website. We get about 600,000 monthly unique visitors just to the article section of the website. Uh, where people are educating themselves on nutrition and fitness and, you know, health in a lot of cases. Yeah. We have articles on diabetes and hypertension, all of that type of stuff as well, because not everybody's like starting their journey at the same place. Some people are starting their journey 300 pounds overweight and they're 60 and they're diabetic and they, you know, want to change their life and we want to help them too. So right. well, that, that's that's the key, right? It's information and it's yep. the right information because because <clears throat> Instagram or Us Weekly is is not the place. That's all paid advertising where it's, you know, mm -hmm. we, we do the same thing. We, you know, the amount of questions that we get on a daily basis, you know, how do I start a diet? How do I start a, You know, like we're diets, a four letter word, eat healthy, you know, start mm -hmm. with that you well, know, calories in calories out. Yeah. We've done like over 50 podcasts now with Evan and I with complete human. Never once have we had one on nutrition. No, this is the first one that we've had as far as nutrition. So it's, I think it's time. It's time. It's <laughs> yeah. time to rip the bandaid off. It, yes. It's it's a big topic and it's the foundation of everything. Even you were talking about CrossFit. Yeah. We're we're gonna launch this huge partnership with CrossFit that we're trying to like build a structure around right now. We've we've partnered with them for years, but under the new ownership, we may get directly involved in like the level one training from a nutrition standpoint. Oh, I love that. And even for CrossFit, they're selling fitness, but they still have nutrition as the base of the pyramid. Yeah. You know, it's still even in the fitness ecosystem. Everybody knows if your nutrition is off, you're, there's a million sayings for it. you can't outwork a bad diet, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's it's the core of the pyramid, the base of the pyramid. And and well, yeah, it starts with basics like calories in, calories out. I mean, well, and that's can, something that tr that CrossFit really needs because, you know, nothing against CrossFit. I think that they've done amazing things, but, you know, they've taken people and they put them through these level one courses. And now they're responsible for shaping people's health and wellness journey. And that level one course is like a weekend. So like, you know, your 300 pound diabetic go become a level one certified trainer. So now when we start implementing true nutrition training into that, then there is a basis for them to, you know, to actually start teaching people how to live well. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a, a huge part of the educational component. And we're also partnering with like NASM and ISSA, a lot of like the train the trainer organizations mm -hmm. that personal trainers get trained by. And it, that's really to you know, because nobody's spreading the evidence-based nutrition gospel. You know, it, it has to be, that's the hard part about studies is people will go out and read a study and there's so much context when it comes to a study. Like pathology is like the most, we're the most complicated supercomputers ever. So you <laughs> literally cannot read a study in a vacuum without like significant scientific and medical training and have any idea <laughs> what you're talking about from reading it it's it's incredibly difficult because there's you know it's like you know reading about a couple wires and then you're trying to set up this podcast studio there's so many different things going on hopefully jason read about more <laughs> wires since the last time <laughs> but uh <laughs> he's like oh wait are you coming. guys recording i had to i had to get at least three or four <laughs> digs in the podcast um but yeah i mean all jokes aside it there's so much complexity that was a shock that i went through um, you know, when I was first dating my wife as I would read like an article on the internet and I'd be like, oh no, blah, blah, blah. If, you know, I read that, you know, X, Y, Z is bad for you. And she would be like, actually, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. You know, you have to have context around, you know, the specific lens they're looking at. She'd be like, let me see the study. And it'd be like, you know, in seven rats or something, you know, or, or I always joke about the aspartame studies that like still to this day, 
I don't know how to say it, aspartame or aspartame or whatever the hell it is. Uh, the the sugar free stuff that's in Diet Coke or whatever it is. There's like billions of articles about how it's perfectly safe. And there's also billions of articles how it will completely kill you. Yeah. What do you believe? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If you're like a consumer, you're like, oh, my God, what? I don't know what to choose between these two bodies of scientific evidence, right. which is why you need people like PhDs and MDs so they can, you know, look at context amongst all the different studies that are out there and, you know, really try and like see through all the bullshit. Well, that's a challenge, right? Because a lot of it's not necessarily studies. It's someone's interpretation of the studies. So mm -hmm. you know, then all of a sudden or when meta analysis you, yeah, or yeah, like when you realize like, oh, well, seven rats died because they were fed their body weight every single day in aspartame mm -hmm. for a week. I'm like, they would do the same if you gave them water at that level. Yep. It, w whatever it is. And or you look at the study and you realize, oh, it's not double blind. So they, the people actually knew they were getting uh, you know, whatever it is. And that's it, like the placebo effect is like a real thing. That totally. it's, yeah. it's very demonstrably studied uh, in, in a number of different scenarios. So if you think you're going to feel terrible drinking this kombucha, you're going to drink it and be like, God, maybe I maybe I do feel sick. You know, <laughs> they call it like psychosomatic. You're yeah. creating, yeah. Uh, you know, those feelings inside of your body. Are you so. going to have explosive diarrhea from that? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do that here at Trifecta before we go home? Absolutely. Okay. Just want to make sure. All right. That's the end of the podcast, Jay. No. <laughs> they have the bidet at home. We got to bring it back to the day so we can go full oh. circle to the to the fluffer nutters. We right. Were, okay. No, I was literally thinking. I you almost, can't leave those out of round three. I know. I know. I almost actually made them this time to bring in for you guys. That would have been epic. And I didn't Especially work. on a Friday. Even Jason's pissed off. I know. So for, for the listeners who don't know, a fluffer nutter is... Well, it's usually like a sandwich, right? Yes, it is. It's it is usually... your worst white bread, right. like Iron Kids crap with peanut butter. Not the good kind of peanut butter, but no. just like the, you know, the Skippy, the Jif. Yeah, the Jif, Peter Pan, whatever it is. <laughs> and marshmallow cream. <laughs> that's a fluffer nutter. Um, and then we healthified it because that's what we do. Yeah, we right? healthified it. So, <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we put it on rice crackers. Now we added a little Nutella, but it's the sugar-free Nutella. Sugar-free Nutella with organic almond butter. And then you put some of the marshmallow cream on there. Well, yeah. I mean, you got to have some origin to the, exactly. uh, to the thing. But so yeah, what, we're, what we're really hoping for is that trifecta, as you guys get into desserts, which let's talk about that real fast, is is that the fluffer nutter, uh, which we could also <laughs> name. Is going to be an option. Yeah. Which we could also name the Jana and Evan. Okay. The Jevin. The Jevin. <laughs> you get a Jevin Just dessert. smash that up. <laughs> Branding genius right here. Boom. Done. Billion dollars. <laughs> the Jevin. The trifecta Jevin. Yeah. Yeah. Put that in your mouth and swallow it. <laughs> Let's talk about desserts. Yes, mini donuts. We have those coming out soon. Appreciate the plug. It is going to be delicious. They taste like the little Hostess protein donuts. We're we're really excited about them. Um, desserts in general are just something we have to do in a big way because people love dessert. Yeah, you, know, you guys are joking about the fluffer nutters, but you know, dessert is incredibly popular. And I. I've really found even in my personal experience when I eat like super clean, like super, super clean, I still want some sort of like tiny sweet treat at the end of the night. It's like a weird thing that happens and I try and minimize it by they actually have uh, chocolate made with monk fruit now. Mm -hmm. That's like I one. I just bought that the other day. Oh my day. God, it's so good. Yeah. I mean, it tastes <clears throat> almost exactly like chocolate. Uh, it's like, tw you know, 20% of the calories of a regular chocolate bar. You know, it tastes amazing. Even basic like diet hacks like that where you feel like you can get like a a little sweet treat at the end of the night but it you know ultimately you're not eating a ton of calories mm -hmm. uh that's the type of stuff that we shoot for so maybe that's an opportunity for a complete human you guys can make healthy marshmallow cream <laughs> which is the last missing component for your fluffer nuts. so it's funny that you say that but um <laughs> we just signed a contract with jesse graff uh to be one of our ambassadors she's the american ninja warrior was also on wonder woman um, Jana and Jesse are going to be battling out in what we call the Battle of the Beats or Beat Ninja, where they'll be using samurai swords to uh, chop up some beats on a beach um, <laughs> as part of our, our res beat. But I hope you're enough, filming this. Well, well you're totally filming yeah, this. Absolutely. In fact, she had her first uh, her first sword experience last night where she-, she I chopped a squash in half. Literally went in the backyard and put the cutting board with a squash on there and I got this like massive sword. It's like, called a katana, right? Yes. And then I take it and just- and it was a perfect cut, my first time ever doing it. So 
It was a bet. But anyway, so with her, um, we've discussed actually launching a um, a uh, sugar-free chocolate as well. So this is something that, you know, we, same thing. We do chocolate every single night. It's like, it's a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Let's make it a little less guilty. Yep, yeah. exactly. And you guys pump yours with protein, right? The donuts, mm -hmm. they're protein. Yep, yep, yeah. they're protein donuts. And that, that for me is like the solution is to make desserts that are made with like either whey or casein protein or, or even the donuts are actually a vegan protein. Yeah. They're like a... BC, you know, blend of vegan protein. So we get a full BCA profile in. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Donuts are amazing. And Jason always brings them into the office. I banned him from bringing donut trays into the office because they're so delicious um, that we want to have like a healthy protein option. So so awesome. excited about desserts. We'll do episode four <laughs> of the complete human <laughs> trifecta podcast when we release the fluffer nutters and or get some donuts. You guys haven't tried the donuts. Yet. We have no, not tried the donuts. Okay. All right. All right. Well, since we keep talking about this, I, I think, you know, what we want to do is finish this out is, is you know, we love what you guys are doing. And, and, you know, I think one of the reasons that we've come back three times um, more <laughs> than just the tech issues, Jason. <laughs> is that we want to tell this story. You guys are making an impact in the world. And when we first set out to do the Complete Human podcast, it was telling inspirational stories of amazing people doing great things in the world and diet and fixing the diet and making health and wellness a priority is number one in our book. So A, we appreciate what you're doing, but B, we want to support you guys. You know, how do we, how do we get the message out and where are you guys going? You know, how do we, how do we get people involved in the trifecta movement? Um, I mean, we've got a bunch of different ways to interact with us. Obviously, we're on all the social media platforms. We've got a bunch of, you know, great celebrities and celebrity athletes that we work with that, you know, promote the brand. We've got a Why huge... Why aren't you pointing at me on that one? Okay. Your, your followers are not up to par yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're making gains, though. I've been right. watching. Uh, it, it's uh, We also have a huge Facebook community. Um, a bunch of people interact on the app. We have like a smartphone app where we do a 90-day challenge and people talk about it in this, you know, big Facebook group group we have also called trifecta of course um so a lot of ways to interact with us but you know for the most part we're just trying to encourage americans to eat healthier across the board um you know using education convenience apps donuts anything we possibly <laughs> can to you know really get the message across. in the air fryer in the air fryer which yeah. we didn't talk about enough but uh, we'll, we'll save that for episode four and we, we definitely <laughs> recommend to everybody get an air fryer and eat protein donuts. Uh, it's the best possible combination. Cool. And guys, um, you know, we'll put this in the show notes, but obviously we're going to have a special deal for all of you listeners, uh, on trifecta. So we want you to experience what we experience on a daily basis, which is really our, our biggest challenge is what protein are we going to eat? Like that's the conversation. Yeah, which that we one? Have. Yeah. It's, it's an easy, it's an easy choice though. Any of them. Cool. Thank Love you, it. Greg. Greg, Sounds good. thank you so much once again for hosting us here. Appreciate it. Thank yes. you guys for coming out a Absolutely. third time. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into the Complete Human Podcast with your host. Jana Breslin. And Evan DeMarco. Uh, this has been round three. And uh, hey, we're hoping for round four, five, and six, but we'll make sure that those actually get aired. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, thanks for tuning guys. in. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.